The most common problems or obstacles are time and the risk as to whether you can actually develop a product or not. A study was done at Columbia University that talked about the time. And they discovered that once work had begun on the research, it took four or five years before people understood the research, research results well enough that they saw a problem that the research might be able to solve. So four or five years occurred. The tech transfer office received a disclosure, sought a patent fairly quickly, within six months. And Columbia discovered that from the time the patents were sought, that the number of deals that they did to transfer the technology, it took time. They discovered that 30%, almost a third of the licenses that they signed on those technologies were licensed to companies within three years of the submission of the patent. Beyond that, another 40% of the deals were licensed out in the next four years for a total of seven years. And then believe it or not, there was another 30% Almost a third of the deals took longer than that to pass the rights into the hands of the company. So there's that time frame, four or five years, seven to maybe 10 years. And then finally, it depended on what the technology was and what the problem was as to when a product was discovered and taken into the marketplace. If it was a piece of software, it might take a further two years. If it was a medical device or a physical device uh, that was commercialized, it might take the company five years to take a product into the marketplace. And if it was a life-saving drug, it might take another eight years while the uh, regulatory work was done, while the clinical trials were done to make sure that the drug worked properly and did not have unexpected side effects that might kill people. So all of a sudden you realize the time is very long. So one of the obstacles is time. But then you look at that time frame and look at the research career of the faculty members themselves. And from the time they get their PhD and begin work until they retire, there's at least a productive time period of 30 years. So this time frame of technology transfer fits very well with that. That's one of the obstacles. The other obstacle are risks. It may be that the idea works in the laboratory, but it doesn't work as a product. It doesn't scale up. It might be that the idea works well in the laboratory, but the company cannot make a product that's economical enough to be sold in the face of competition in the marketplace. And then finally, given the long time frames of development, it may be that as the work is being developed in a product, a competitive answer to the solution of the problem comes into the marketplace and you're out of luck. So the risk factor is quite high. It turns out that there are benefits even if the product is not developed well and it even fails in the marketplace. The process itself is beneficial to many people. And one of the reasons is the following. Let's focus on the inventors and the faculty members, the researchers. Working on a problem is very creative and it can lead to a practical solution so that the research of the group can help people eventually by saving lives, improving the quality of life, such as producing better foods, or increasing a company's 
competitiveness. There is an example here in Serbia of a university that wanted to transmit a map of underground wires to the cell phone of the utility workers. There was a discussion with the university that was interested in transferring the technology. I don't know, it's a process in place right now. So for the involved individuals, it's stimulating, uh, they can access new financial resources to propel the research forward. And if there's students involved, they get a sense of entrepreneurial approaches to solving problems, which is beneficial. Now let's look at the university as an institution. Universities historically have been seen as ivory towers, separate from society. It's a misperception in my view. But this process allows the university to show the community that provides the money to hire the faculty at the university that the university is actually trying to solve real problems. So it becomes less of an ivory tower and is engaged in real problems, saving lives if it works. As far as the university is concerned, it shows the government who uses the taxpayer's money that it's a good investment. And even if the product doesn't get into the marketplace successfully, the faculty members who are involved have a new way to describe the impact or the benefits of the research through elevator pitches, explaining what they do, not in highly technical terms, but in terms that people really understand because it talks about the impact and the actual benefits. Now let's talk about the companies. The companies are in the marketplace. They're always looking for better ways of doing things, new solutions, new products, less expensively. A university might be working on a market problem that the company is interested in and decides that their current product is becoming out of date. And if they work with the university and transfer the knowledge to the company, and a new product is developed and introduced, and that works, the jobs are saved, or perhaps even more jobs are created in the company. The company improves its ability to market, not only locally, but perhaps even uh, throughout all of Europe, or perhaps even globally, based on the creativity on the campus with this idea. So the company benefits. I think the short answer is that uh, working together, uh, trying to take the knowledge on the campus and turn it into products that will actually benefit people, the students on the campus will benefit by getting involved in the projects, the faculty and the researchers uh, are working in new creative areas of problem solving. Uh, the companies have access to new ideas which they can uh, acquire the rights to make new products. And as a society, uh, Serbia will be able to have what I will call a virtuous cycle. The taxpayers will pay the salaries of the universities to both teach the students who can then transfer the technology when they're hired by the company, or the faculty members themselves uh, can benefit um, by educating the students, transferring the technology. And at the end of the day, the Serbian society will benefit because the tax money is used to generate the ideas that are then transferred to the companies that hire people to develop the products, hire more people, to manufacture the products, hire more people to sell the products, not only locally, uh, but outside the region, and perhaps even like the tax hall, globally. So the benefit of all of this complicated process is when it works, it really works well and has a huge impact. 
and even when the product fails to make it to the marketplace, the students and researchers and the companies have worked together in an effective manner uh, to help improve the economy locally. There are several lessons. And one of the lessons is that these other countries are not better than what's happening in Serbia. It's just that we've been at it a longer time, 40, 50 years. And so we've learned some things that we hope our mistakes will not be repeated as you continue to do technology transfer here in the country. So that's one thing. The second thing is this is not a way to make a lot of money. These golden eggs occur once or twice in a decade somewhere in the world. So it will never replace government financing, taxpayer financing of the university in the basic research. The other very interesting things that are emerging right now is there are a lot of creative things happening on campuses that are important in the marketplace that are not protectable by patents, software, databases, and just general information. And these are very useful. And uh, in the countries that you've mentioned, people are now beginning to transfer the knowledge of these creative ideas without the patent protection and having an impact. This activity can be done very successfully here in Serbia. It can have a huge impact and on the marketplace and the quality of people's lives here in Serbia. And what it takes is a simple commitment of the government, the universities, the researchers, and the society itself to work through this complicated but very manageable process in the hopes that more of these opportunities will blossom into successful products or small new companies are formed. So I think these are the lessons learned, that this is an activity that's worth being engaged in. There's a high rate of failure, there's a great deal of satisfaction, and eventually the golden egg may turn up somewhere in Europe, perhaps here even in Serbia. You never know. But what you do know, if you don't try, it won't show up. I think the takeaway message is that uh, this is an activity uh, that started elsewhere, but can be adapted and used here. And you think back of people, Serbs, who being faced with the challenge of creating a life, decided to emigrate and go to another country and the benefits of their inventions and ideas accrued to those other countries. This is a method that through government support, university support, taxpayer support, can keep those very bright young people here in Serbia so that their creative ideas can stay here, benefit people here, so that people don't have to leave. And furthermore, there are very interesting uh, projects here that I've seen already where a little bit of technology transfer will take it out to companies that are very interested, don't recognize what's going on here in Serbia, are pleased to understand, and are looking to interact uh, with the uh, people here, and that the society longer term can benefit from an activity like this, whether the products come into the marketplace or not. <laughs>